Welcome back, everyone, to the eCore Academy eLearning platform today. My name is AJ Raj, and I'll be back with you guys for another anatomy and physiology video for you all within our science course at the eCore Academy eLearning platform, as I had said before. Uh, today's lesson topic is going to be a continuation off of our excretory system, in which we're going to be introducing the major structures of the excretory system. But before we get into the meat of today's lesson, please make sure to do four things. Please make sure to smash the subscribe button, hit that like button on this video, turn on post notifications, and feel free to comment down below. If you have any feedback at all, if you have any suggestions for future videos, or if you just want to reach out to us in a positive manner, please make sure to utilize that comment section to the best of your ability. And we will get back to it, we promise. As I was saying, today's lesson topic is going to be focused on the excretory system and continuing off of the fundamentals that we've already looked at. If you haven't already watched my first video uh, within our anatomy and physiology course, it, within this system for the introduction or overview for the excretory system, please, please, please make sure to watch that before getting into this lesson. Uh, the fundamentals are already built. The precedents are already set for what the system has uh, to offer to you so that you're not entirely confused going into this lesson. So please make sure that you're please make sure that you're going to uh, essentially uh, get yourselves involved with this lesson uh, and make sure that you are, are already caught up to date uh, with the course and the curriculum that I'm going to be showing you today. So after looking at the overview of the excretory system, we're going to be moving into some of the major structures of the excretory system, what their basic functions are, what their you know hyperextensive functions are, and what exactly they might look like within the body itself and how they contribute to the excretory system. So we're gonna go into more specifics today and try and break, it, break down the excretory system from just a system to its separate anatomical counterparts and their physiological role, what their structure is and what their function and purpose and task to do so. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Like I said before in my previous video, I wanted to make sure that I set the precedent for the actual system itself first but before we actually get into the lesson uh, with the major structures, I just wanted to put out there what this whole course would be structured as, uh, you know, as there thereof. Uh, just like with my muscular system uh, series, uh, I made sure that with our overview, I always introduce the topic. And then for our second, you know, following video, I made sure to uh, show you guys what the topics are uh, within, you know, this entire system. Uh, what are the different types of topics that we'll be organizing into lessons? So these are the these are the future lesson topics within uh, this system, of course. So the lessons of the system will be structured as follows. We'll have the major structures of the excretory system, what we're actually going over today. Then we have the urinary system, uh, which is a separate counterpart of the excretory system. We have, uh, you know, we're going to have uh, lessons on all about the kidneys. Kidneys are probably the highlight of the excretory system. And, you know, as a, a separate major structure of it, it's very, very, very vital to it. And it's kind of like that, you know, spotlight. Then we have urea and uric acid, very important in the breakdown of, uh, you know, breakdown of materials and substances within the kidneys into urine. And uh, then we have the excretion of waste, how this urine is actually, and this fluid and gaseous waste is actually exiting the body through excretion. Uh, and then we have the different types of waste, like toxic waste, uh, byproducts, or, you know, tonicity, things that are ex excess within the body that need to be excreted. And of course, here we have a little overview of what the excretory system really is. Uh, of course, we also have the lungs, but I'll be going over as a separate disclaimer on the last slide of this uh, specific lesson. But we're going to mainly focus on the other fluid, fluid excretion, which doesn't have to deal with the lungs. It has to deal with the kidneys, uh, the ureters, the bladder, the urethra, and then the excretion. So this is a little diagram of exactly what those are. We have those two kidneys on the sides, and then of course they're connected by the ureters. And don't worry, I'll go over all of this in depth in this lesson. And then of course we have the bladder, which actually stores the urine. We have the urethra that releases it to, you know, releases it through that sphincter muscle and out, you know, into the toilet, hopefully getting rid of all your urine, your fluid waste. And this system, uh, if you haven't already noticed, is a bit of a shorter uh, system than most major systems. It's considered a minor system uh, overall, but I do think it's very, very important. It has, has lots of in-depth concepts. And overall, it's very you know, essential to, for all of us uh, viewers and users to know this. You know, forget about actually going into uh, 
uh, an anatomy and physiology career, that that's something that you definitely need to hear, be here for. But even if you're just here to get information on, you know, so what are some of the health risks? How do I take care of my uh, excretory system? And what exactly does it do? You know, what 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 is what are its functions? So these are all common knowledge concepts that it's useful for every every single one of us because we all have it. We can all relate to it. All right. So enough of these overview, this is generality. Let's get into more specifics uh, on the major structures. So let's kick off this lesson officially. So let's start off with probably the most important organ within the excretory system. We have the overview of the kidneys. So all about the kidneys. So the kidneys filter out blood that is circulated towards its opening and turns the toxins and waste in blood into urine as the rest is pumped back into the body. So as you can see here, uh, what, what's happening essentially with the kidneys, is, it's the main factory process uh, of the entire excretory system. It takes those essential nutrients that are being filtered out through the circulation of blood. So the bloodstream, it all enters through all the organs. And once it enters the kidneys, it gets officially filtered out. Uh, all these waste toxins and excess substances are essentially turned into uh, waste, into urine within the kidneys themselves during ure using urea and uric acid. And most of the time, your blood is consistent of 25% waste at maximum. So at maximum, it has 25% of toxins throughout the whole body's contact, content. Uh, so that's all toxins. It could be, uh, you know, essentially it could be uh, solubles, which are solids within actual fluid. And they can all be turned into urine, which is excreted through this in, in this manner. But then, of course, we have a different system, digestive system, which has to do with solid excretion. And that's a completely different process that has to do with carbon. This has to do with your toxins. So uh, another function, which is also very important, is that the kidneys um, have to have major involvement in homeostasis, which is the process in which it regulates the pH level and tonicity of blood by taking out excess waste in the blood or directing it back into the bloodstream. So it regulates your pH level, which is your potential hydrogen level. Uh, that's what that controls the acidity of your blood. If you have too much acidity or not enough acidity in terms of becoming a base, uh, it's not good for your body. It's your body's going to overcompromise and it becomes toxic. Your blood. It also controls the tonicity of blood, which is the salt concentration of the blood. If you have too much salt, um, you're essentially going to dry out your entire all of your blood cells, and they're going to shrivel up, and you're not going to get proper circulation. And if you have not enough, your blood cells are going to swell and you're going to start to clot in certain parts of your body. So it helps clear out salt in excess manner. And of course, excess waste in blood. So like toxic uh, waste, such as ammonia, or it can direct uh, essential nutrients back into the blood bloodstream that are actually needed that lack within the body, such as glucose and sugar levels in, in order to increase your sugar levels. And just a little diagram here. First, we have the blood itself uh, within the bloodstream circulating throughout the body that enters the kidney specifically, of course, through vein venules and um, veins. As you can see here, the blue and the red, those are venules and veins, uh, part of the cardi cardiac system, cardiovascular system. And then what happens here is filtration reabsorption, and reabsorption. And then, of course, another counterpart is secretion, but I will get into that. But those are just ma main things. So filtration, it filters blood. Reabsorption, it's, you know, essentially gives back to the body what it needs and what it's lacking that's about to be excreted as waste in urine uh, or turned into urine. And it also has to do with something called sec secretion, which is actually getting rid of that urine. And then, of course, we have the actual urine exiting, which is your secretion. And this is, of course, 25% content. Normally, average for uh, blood content, it's 25% urine, 25% uh, waste, which turns into urine. And it actually exits and officially excretes through the bladder and through the urethra. All right, let's move on into the specifics of the functions of the kidneys. And this is, of course, part one. So the first process for the functions of the kidney, as I had uh, introduced before in the previous slide, we have filtration. So filtration is the fluid was when fluid pressure builds up with inside, with, you know, inside of the kidneys, uh, which pushes the solubles, which are essentially these, uh, you know, your solid wastes within fluid itself. Um, and dissolve substances out of blood. These are ex ex excess material and just waste overall. It could be toxic, toxic material, uh, or not needed material, or just waste material in general uh, that are actually excreted. And I will do an entire video on exactly what these materials could be, uh, what these different types of toxic materials, excess materials, and just waste materials are. But in general, it's just taking out your toxins, your waste, and excess material in the body. Using that fluid pressure, 
uh, fluid pressure. It pre essentially is putting down pressure on the blood itself, which causes filtration and also within the kidneys themselves, as I would say, uh, you know, as this next bullet states, uh, not just fluid pressure allows for the waste materials to separate from uh, pure blood. It also allows for the spongy layers of the kidneys, which are also known as the cortexes uh, and also your, your cavities, uh, has many cavities that will allow for blood to enter and filter itself. So aside from just fluid pressure, pressing down within the kidney in layman's terms, pressing down on the blood and making sure that, uh, you know, your solubles, your solids, solid waste and wasted scent in turn are actually separated from blood. So it can be, blood can be, you know, reabsorbed back into the body and then the waste can actually be secreted. It also uses its spongy layers inside of the kidneys. As you can see here, these are called your cortexes. And what happens here is just mainly filtration filters, filters manually. So blood passes through these different cortexes. That's why the kidney has so many layers and we'll go over the layers in more depth in different videos to come. Uh, and that's gonna be all about our kidneys videos. Uh, and what happens in these cortexes is that blood actually passes through the different layers of the kidneys. Uh, air traps it within and it allows for the, you know, the fluid pressure to push blood through the kidneys and filter itself out into pure blood where it's then put back into the bloodstream. And those waste materials are secreted through a different valve, through the opposite valve. Now, moving on to the functions of the kidneys part two, we're going to look at the very second process. So the second process is known as reabsorption. And this is the process in which new, uh, useful nutrients and substances like glucose, uh, which is essentially sugar, am amino acids, which are your proteins, and pure blood cells, which is just clean blood, uh, re-enter the bloodstream. And this also has to do with salts as well, tonicity. And the reason that I include included salts is that just like any other substance, when the body is depleted of essential nutrients, it needs to reabsorb certain nutrients before it's accidentally excreted. Uh, and I'll give you an example here. So this can occur, like I said, reabsorption in general, when certain substances are depleted from the body. Um, glucose, for example, is reabsorbed when the person has very low sugar levels. So what's happening in reabsorption, just to summarize, is after the body actually filters out the blood, uh, filters out the blood from, you know, separating blood from the toxins and its other uh, nutrients inside, it'll essentially reabsorb blood back into the bloodstream, meaning it'll release from the kidneys back into the bloodstream. Then what also happens is if there are certain nutrients that are filtered out from that blood uh, that are actually needed within the body, like I said here, if the person has very sh low sugar levels and the sugar was actually filtered out from the blood, uh, it'll also release the sugar back into the body because it needs it to essentially be more effective. And that's why kidneys have very, very important roles in your performance, especially athletes would know this. Uh, if you did some you know, research about it or if you had a physical therapist, uh, you would know that kidneys actually do help in your performance overall in that same manner. And then, of course, as we can see here, we have reabsorption taking place uh, within the actual kidney itself. So it's internal process. And how it exits, it exits back through its entry valve. So it can exit through entry valve, you know, going back into the body. So exit through entry valve. Or it can be directly secreted from, uh, directly secreted back into the body from the actual um, exterior of the kidney. So secreted through, uh, through outside of kidney. And I'll talk about the layers. I don't want to give it away and confuse you all, but secreted through the out, secreted through outermost layer. of kidneys. All right, let's move on to the third process in the functions of the kidneys. So obviously this is part three, continuation. So the third process. This third process, as I had mentioned before, and give a bit of a disclaimer to it, uh, it doesn't necessarily be, it isn't necessarily a very internal process of just the kidney, but it has to utilize, you know, the ureter and just the overall process itself. So the third process of the kidneys are these is the secretion in relation to the kidneys this is the secretion and it's a process that involves active transport and if you don't know what active transport is active transport is essentially when the, a certain cell or certain organs are trying to get rid of uh certain materials or excess materials within 
uh, the given cell or organ. And what it does is it pushes past, you know, past the actual current, the flow of the actual organ or the cell, just to put it in layman's terms. And if you uh, want more of an uh, overview of it, please make sure to check out Anita's Biology One course videos. She goes through all of this in depth, the basics of biology. But active transport is when you're going past that current system within the cells and the organs, uh, and it requires energy in order to actually uh, get rid of or secrete um, your uh, waste products that you don't want inside of those organs. And in this process, active transport is happening when uh, certain waste is actually being pushed out of the kidneys through that pressure and it utilizes energy. So it, it's a process that involves active transport in order to secrete toxins and harmful byproducts as waste through make, utilizing ure, urea and uric acid, which I will also go into, into more depth in future videos to come. It utilizes urea and uric acid to break down these uh, toxins and, uh, and waste materials and also the harmful byproducts and assorts it into urine so that it can be excreted from the body. And it's considered to be an opposing process to that of reabsorption. Obviously, it's going in an opposite direction. Reabsorption is going back into the body. Secretion is making sure that it exits the body, going directly to the bladder so that it can be excreted. And once something enters the bladder, goes into the uh, urethra, it's not coming back into the body. Uh, that, that process of the potential to be reabsorbed is all, you know, definitive within the kidney itself. And it's considered opposite uh, to reabsorption, uh, and it causes for nutrients in the body that are of excess or are toxic to exit the body, uh, such as excess salt in the bloodstream, uh, just as an example. So this is a definitive action in which everything in this, uh, in this process is going to be excreted. It's a process in which it moves uh, out of the body and from the kidneys. And as you can see here, uh, this is a very important part of the kidney. This is your closing valve. This is just your exit valve. Exit valve of your kidneys. And this is officially where that uh, excess waste is being excreted from the kidneys through these valves. Uh, and as you can see here, these valves have closing and opening uh, contortions. They have that uh, programming within uh, the actual valves. It's not something that we can control. It's not voluntary muscle, but these valves open and close whenever they need to in order to get rid of waste within the kidneys. So uh, for example, why, why exactly that would happen? Uh, you would have a closed valve when the kidney is actually still conducting its process. It still has pure blood within it and it doesn't want to get rid of that blood yet. It's not done filtering out. You would want to keep a closed valve. Otherwise that blood would actually be secreted and you'd essentially be peeing out blood or it would be uh, completely diminished in that process. Now let's take a brief overview uh, of the bladder now. This is our next major structure of the excretory system. So all about the bladder. So the bladder, what exactly is the bladder and what are its relationships with the other parts of the excretory system? So the bladder receives urine from the kidneys through the ureter after urea and uric acid within the kidneys actually break it down into urine. Uh, and it turns it into waste as it excretes this waste through the urethra. I know that was a mouthful, but that's basically summing up all these, all this correlation relating to the bladder. So the ureter, which is technically a substructure of the uh, excretory system, is the multi-layered tubule that connects the kidneys to the bladder. So we can talk about the kidneys as the very first part of the excretory system that actually receives all the blood that needs to be filtered out and all of those fluids that need to be filtered out and taking out all that waste material. Now what's happening is that fluid is actually traveling through something called your ureter. And once it travels down through your ureter, it's going into your bladder. Uh, and of course the ureter itself is a multi-layered tube that connects the kidneys to the, to the bladder and helps all this urine travel into the bladder. It's multi-layered so that the acidity of the actual urine doesn't burn up the inside of the ureter. And then finally we have the urethra, which attaches to the back of, to the very bottom of the bladder and allows for that urine to finally be released once it's held up in the bladder and it's full, it's gonna be released and exits essentially through the body and into the toilet or anywhere where you're releasing number one and you're going number one. And it allows for you urine to exit the bladder and be excreted when the sphincter muscle is relaxed. And I'll talk about what the sphincter muscle is uh, in, a next, in the next few slides. So just to give you a brief overview, we have the kidneys, the starting point of the excretory system. And then of course we have the ureters in which the uh, kidneys produce the urine itself after secreting all those wastes from uh, important fluids 
and reabsorbing. It's officially secreting it through the ureters, which are those passages to, uh, that connect to the bladder itself. The bladder will then store that urine for a certain amount of time. It has it's thick coated like the ureter in order to uh, withstand the acidity of the urine. And then of course we have the urethra in which the bladder actually pushes through pressure into the urethra where it's then excreted, you know, leaves the body officially all that urine. Now let's take a look at some of the simple functions of the bladder, part one. And I'm just gonna go over a simple diagram, just identify, give you guys a visual of what exactly I was talking about. So we have the first starting point, correct? Right here, we have the kidneys. which is the starting point. And just to sum up the kidneys, it just turns, or we can just say develops urine, creates urine. And then here we have our two ureters. So what do ureters do? Transport urine from kidneys into bladder. And of course, this release is controlled by that, like I said, that exit valve of the kidney itself. It has a biological term, but I'll get into that all in our video to come all about the kidneys. Um, and through that exit valve, it's controlled. And once that exit valve is open, uh, the urine will essentially be released through the uh, urethra, uh, into sorry, through the ureters into the bladder. And then up here, of course, we have our bladder. My L got hidden a little bit. And the bladder, its main function, like I said before, is to store urine. And then finally, right here, we have our urethra, which releases the urine. Which releases the urine and once it releases the urine, that's at your closure to release it yourself. So the urethra, what it does is it's very confusing here. Sometimes a lot of people get confused, but let me break this down for you. What happens is the bladder uh, essentially has the urine and it will release it into the urethra once it is full or once, you know, uh, once it is full at a certain uh, level. Once it releases it into the urethra, essentially uh, it's storing it within the urethra and you can release it anytime that you'd like. That's your voluntary control. Uh, of peeing essentially so you have the control to pee once it's in your urethra and it's right near your genitals that's right where you need to pee uh through that um essentially near the um uh the exit points of the body then we have functions of the bladder part two and this is properties of the bladder we're going to look at specific properties of the bladder and correlation with the sphincter muscle and how the urethra works which is a little bit confusing so i'll break that down for you so the bladder, essentially, its main function is just to hold and store urine for a certain amount of time. And of course, those specific measurements are that the bladder can hold up to 16 ounces of urine, which is actually a lot of urine. Uh, and it is fairly small, actually. So it's nearly full, full size. It can hold up to full capacity. And it can hold up to 16 ounces of urine from anywhere between two and five hours. And the bladder is coated with a waxy membrane that helps it withstand the acidity of the urine and in preventing reabsorption. Like we said, we don't want that urine to be reabsorbed by the body and released because it's already toxic. It's all the toxic material or excess material that we don't want back into the body. So it keeps that urine within the bladder and it doesn't burn up the bladder with its acidity. And once that happens, it releases into the actual urethra uh, when the sphincter muscle is relaxed. So the sphincter muscle is a little muscle at the bottom of the bladder. It controls that valve between the bladder and the urethra. So that voluntary, that it's an involuntary sphincter muscle, that sphincter muscle will release once the bladder is nearly full and that urine will then drip, go down into the urethra. And then what happens is you have your own voluntary sphincter, which is your own genitals. So you can control when you want to release that bottom part once it's in the urethra, exactly when you want to release 
um, the urine. So there's two parts, your voluntary and your involuntary sphincter, but I'll also get into that into depth later on. So what happens here, you have your uh, bladder, and then of course you have the uh, sphincter, voluntary, sphincter, uh, involuntary, involuntary sphincter, then you have your bladder to your involuntary sphincter, then to your uh, urethra, and then your voluntary sphincter, which is what you choose when you choose to release that urine. So voluntary sphincter. All right. And for our last slide, we're just going to go over briefly about the lungs and I'm going to put out a little disclaimer. So the lungs do play a role in excretion in the body, but it doesn't follow the traditional fluid excretion that I was going over in this video and in this lesson. Uh, it's, it's different from the rest of the excretory system and excretory process, as you can see, because it has to do with gaseous uh, form of excretion in which, you know, oxygen is entering the lungs and you're getting rid of that carbon dioxide. And of course, not just oxygen, but nitrogen, all those things within air, and you're filtering it out and releasing those byproducts, that waste. Um, however, it's different because it's not fluid and it's not connecting to the rest of the system. So that's why it's a little bit of a counterpart. I will be going over this, but not as uh, in depth because it's its own system. Technically, it's its circulatory system. And we're mainly focusing on the urinary system within the excretory system. So it was called the excretory system, this whole system, and not just the urinary system for this course specifically that we made for Ecore Academy, because we also wanted to include the lungs within this process, just to put out there that the lungs technically are scientifically proven to be a part of the excretory system. We wanted to put it out there. We wanted to make sure our viewers weren't, uh, viewers, you guys aren't confused at all, uh, but technically it's not uh, attached to the rest of the, rest of the system. Uh, so it's not just the urinary system, it's the excretory system overall. And then, of course, just to give you a brief overview of the lungs, because we didn't go over it formally, but I did go over it in my uh, overviews uh, of the excretory system video. The lungs essentially are responsible for filtering out your air, what you're breathing in through either your nose or your mouth. Once you um, breathe in air, it's mostly, it's about or approximately 70%, uh, 70 to 80% nitrogen and approximately 21% oxygen. And what it will do is it'll filter out that air to make sure that oxygen uh, is essentially entering those little chambers within the um, uh, lungs. It's being passed to the bloodstream and into the body where essentially your blood passes it on and you need it for survival. And then of course, a byproduct of that is carbon dioxide developed. So it exchanges the oxygen into the body and releases the carbon dioxide out. So every time you inhale, you always exhale. And when you inhale, you inhale oxygen and you exhale carbon dioxide. So it's all about the filtration process and storage of air. All right, everyone, so that'll be it for today. Uh, this is an eCore Academy e-learning platform. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, hit that like button on this video, of course. Smash the subscribe button for us. Uh, turn on post notifications and feel free to utilize that comment section. And just as a shout out there, we'll also be doing a disorders uh, section on the excretory system as well. I did not include it at the beginning of this video, but please stay tuned for that. It's very important, such as certain diseases with like the bladder and the kidneys. Uh, what can happen when you don't um, utilize the, you, you know, when you don't pass urine for a very long time, what are some diseases and disorders that can occur and how we can prevent them. So just as a disclaimer, I uh, just want to put it out there. We will also be doing uh, a uh, dis disorders uh, sequences of videos. Uh, but also feel free to check out our e uh, website at ecoreacademy.org and feel free to, uh, where we have full unlocked access to all of our videos with note sheets and quizzes to help you guys understand these concepts even better. And you can even make an account there to check your progress. Also, utilize our email at ecoreacademy at gmail.com if you have any questions or if you just want to reach out to us. And if you aren't able to um, get a response from our comments, which you most likely will. Uh, then, of course, finally, check out our socials in the description box below, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And we also have our new TikTok um, account, so please make sure to follow that. Uh, it has some, you know, skits and cool stuff outside of just academics. Some really entertaining stuff to, you know, drift you off from your day and put a good distraction, um, you know, on your hours and your minutes. Uh, and you, obviously those full links are there. Please utilize those mediums uh, to share all of our videos and see what kind of interesting content we have out there. All right, everyone. So that'll be it for today's video. This has been AJ Raj, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.